three, two, one. Wow. Oh my God, that's cold. It may be cold, but I am in beautiful Southern California. Although this is the coldest podcast in all the Midwest, I don't feel even a lick of chill right now. I am in the warm weather, relaxing, um, and this is the vacation podcast. So Ryan's in the freezing cold. I'm here in the best weather ever. No wind, uh, no cold. Golf course in the back. Just all palm trees, golf courses, sunglasses, and tan. So... Um, Let's get into the show. Here at You Betcha, we know that life is way too short to hold your own drink, and that's why we have the Bev Buckle. Now, the Bev Buckle is a belt buckle that is the world's first retractable drink holder. And I tell you what, this thing holds your bush lattes like a charm. They are handmade here in the U.S., And these guys were also on Shark Tank, so they are the perfect gift for someone who loves to drink bush lattes, but, you know, just doesn't want to be bothered with the fact of holding the bush latte. You can find these guys on their social media at BevBuckle or on their website, BevBuckle.com. That's B-E-V-B-U-C-K-L-E.com. And if you want 15% off of your order, use promo code YouBetcha with no space. That's Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A, you betcha. promo code 50% off at BevBuckle.com. And I hope that you guys love your Bush Latte holder. I want to talk to you guys about U Motors, Motorsports and Marine located in Fargo, North Dakota and Pelican Lake, Minnesota. They have all of the best brands, Honda, Yamaha, Ski-Doo, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, Nautique Boats, Super Boats, Supreme Boats, all of the boats, and even Avalon Pontoons. If you mention this ad, you can get 20% off parts and accessories, and obviously some exclusions may apply, but you can get 20% off parts and accessories. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, but also at their website, umotorsinc.com again that's umotorsinc.com i would venture to say it's almost the nectar of the gods back baby back i want my push oh my god that's cold oh you betcha yeah yeah all right guys thanks for tuning in to the you betcha radio podcast episode nine the vacation podcast i oh, yeah. am ryan the t-shirt guy and i am stranded in the Midwest while I can uh, I can see a beautiful luscious green golf course in the background of miles right now he's soaking up the Sun in California um, but someone's got to hold down home base someone's got to someone's got to wear the robe when we're here so we're getting the job yeah, done. Um, we're gonna need to talk about this Ryan yeah uh, man. the content around the well, robe has been pretty fun people have been eating it up <laughs> yeah you're you're Excuse my language, but you're getting dead when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, like I said, someone's got to wear the robe. Someone's got to wear the hat. Someone's got to wear the robe in our situation. So I threw no, it on. I guess I guess I should have brought it with when I came. And yeah. um, but that was my mistake. Yeah, uh, it's keeping me warm, man. Like, people weirdly like seeing you in a robe, though, is kind of what I've started to realize is like, Grown men are commenting and saying that they like you in the robe. Yeah, yeah. There's is... there's some dirty jokes on there, um, which I I'm embracing it all. Um, I think I pull the robe off pretty pretty well, but uh, good, it's it's been keeping me warm. It's white. Good thing it's white because I think I'm gonna need to bleach it when I get home. Yeah, there there will need to be some bleaching done. I uh, yeah, today's I think today marks day three. Um, it's been pretty nice here. Obviously, you told me not to turn the heat above 50, so I've been keeping it at 50. I've uh, I've had the robe on. It's really the only thing that has kind of kept me going. I had to throw the heat press on just to, to give off a little bit more warmth, um, but being the Ryan well, T-shirt. That, well, that'll, elect, that'll come off of your paycheck this month. Yeah, we'll have to, check, we'll have to compare the, like, oh, we'll, have to, we'll have to compare the electric bill last month. I think it'll be fine, but yeah, I might just have to go lay upstairs and uh, and do my work up there. Yeah, um, and by the way, I didn't tell you fifty. I told you forty-five for the temperature. <laughs> okay, so that'll uh, come that out is, of my paycheck. Yeah, so um, <laughs> not really excited to have to do the math on that when I get back, but I guess that's just part of it. Um, 
Yeah, what do you think of my new glasses, Ryan? <sighs> yeah, I... Uh. <laughs> 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 I knew you were gonna get that reaction. These babies were twenty bucks. Uh, I said that was part of your. It was part of your thirty-five dollar gas station spend. So you only yeah. had fifteen dollars to buy snacks with your your flaming hot Cheetos, your whatever else you're buying there, your Krispy Kremes. Oh, yeah. Your <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I uh, was able to get by with spending twenty bucks on these babies and fifteen bucks on on puff corn and uh, flaming hot Cheetos, but. They're just a new twist on the old school, like baseball glasses. They're just straight across. That's exactly what I was gonna say. They look like a pair of Oakleys that I would wear um, back in the days. So I, I think you're pulling them off. I think you can uh, bring those back to the Midwest and and see if it kind of catches on with some people. Well, one one of the things that I think is funny about going on vacation is we all have our like vacation self that we are when we're on vacation. Oh yeah. So the, the sp you're wearing you know Sperry's I mean? right now. Well, yeah, I'm wearing my uh I bought some <laughs> authentic Mexican hirachis. Okay. Um so I'll give you a sneak peek what these babies look like. Oh these yeah. These babies these babies were 35 bucks um on online somewhere. They literally <clears throat> came from like a shack in Mexico. Uh, handmade, handcrafted. Handmade. When I got them, the leather smelled so bad I had to like keep them in my garage for like a week so that they would air out. It smelled like dead bodies <laughs> in my place. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like you have this vacation self where you maybe wear some like this shirt. You're not necessarily going to wear this unless it's like you're at the lake in the summer in right. the Midwest. You're not going to wear this in the winter. Um, you're maybe not going to find these shades at a, at a store and buy them and wear them around that much. Um, we all do a little, we go a little more risky on what we would wear on vacation and the way we would behave on vacation because we literally uh, don't know anyone here. So there's burp. no pressure. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Where, where do you vacation mostly in the winter if you're going to go on a warm vacation, Ryan? Uh, it's been different the last couple of years. So when I was, uh, again, back in the day um, playing baseball, we used to go down to Tucson, Arizona for a spring trip. Um, we were down here for like, like seven days, um, all expenses paid by the university. So Not to brag. <laughs> not to brag. But Tucson, Arizona was my home for, for – five years um and went to mexico last year mexico was awesome man people you know people always talk about like did you guys go did you guys go all inclusive no no we don't go all inclusive we're uh I, airbnb I, uh we did a condo um yeah we, we had a connection with a condo that was open up um the the future um mother and father-in-law have a connection that they've stayed at this place for probably the last two or three years um, it was awesome, man. We had like 11 people in this one place, um, high rise condo, uh, private pool down there, private bar. Um, man, I'd go back to Mexico in a heartbeat. It was, you know, people always say like, oh, you're going to Mexico. Like you're going to be in the, in the touristy part. You're going to be in like the dangerous parts. Like, man, as long as you just don't venture off from downtown or like the resorts or anything like that, you're going to be fine. Um, it was a great experience. Yeah, it's one of those things where so I, I'm in the Coachella Valley right now as we talked about in the last podcast, Ryan. Yeah, and I drove down to San Diego for a little while, and it's like San Diego is really close to the border. Okay, and apparently I had to avoid traffic from people coming and leaving and going to Mexico for work. Interesting. Um, so I think that that would be wild to have to go through customs every day <laughs> just to. Uh, you know, just to go to work for like a normal work day. Yeah, I mean, you forget your passport one day. It's like, well, I'm going to take a sick day today, and I'm going to make the four-hour trek back in traffic. Right. Yeah, so, you know, I know that, like, the Midwest in some parts are supposed to get, like, a foot of snow this weekend, but <laughs> I don't know if I really see us getting a foot of snow here nah, in man. the valley. You guys got a uh, lot of vitamin D down there. Um, so I would like to tell you, we'll, uh, we'll take a little break here, Ryan, and then I'll tell you about my experience trying to find bush lattes and the Natter Days beer. <laughs> 
All right, Miles. So you're in Southern California, not the most pristine place to go find the nectar of the gods. Um, nope. How how tough was it? How how many places do you have to go to? What do you have to go through in order to to find the nectar? Well, so luckily, so luckily we, uh, you know, we talked about on this podcast before that we had the bush.com slash find bush or whatever it is. Yep, the bush locator. So I use that. Obviously, I'm going to use that tool, which I did. But I accidentally didn't change it from bush. I, ch- I didn't change it from bush to bush light. Sure. So I, I did it to put in my zip code, all that, found a place that had it, went there, and all that had was bush heavy <laughs> because I didn't change it from bush to bush light. Um, so I went to a couple different places. Um, one, I did that, and then the next place I went, I thought they had bush light. They were out of it, or they didn't restock it after the last time that they bought it. So then I had to go to another place, and they literally had one case, <laughs> one bushel. That was it. And so I bought the last bushel that they had sitting there. It, it said it was going to cost 25 bucks. Oh, my gosh. But it was on sale. It was on sale for $15. <laughs> hey, thanks for the discounted so, price. <laughs> so people are not buying bush light here in California, I found out. Um, but so I've also been – this uh, the, the Natter Days beer by Natural Light, which I actually have right here. You can see on the cam, Natter Days. I'll let Ryan see it. Um, yeah, I, I saw your photo of it, and uh, it re- it kind of reminded me of the the old bush hunting cans, or the, the not the old bush hunting cans, but the the hunting cans they come out with um, in the fall. But yeah, isn't it's it is fun cooler? Is it is it is it a light beer or is it like flavored like a raspberry? Okay. Pe- so first first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you how I got. So this is the only Natter Days beer I have. Okay. <laughs> This right here is the only one in the Coachella Valley. <laughs> this is the only Natter Days beer in all the Coachella Valley. Wow. So what I did was, so I think Natural Light had similar find me a Natural Light Natter Days beer. Yeah. Which I did. And the sad part was is I put in my zip code and the closest Natter Days beer to where I was was like 68 miles away. And I was like, oh my God. So uh, we were planning on going to San Diego for a little while. So it turned out that on our way back, there was a place that had it. So we stopped there on the way back. I walk into one liquor store. The lady at the front desk didn't even speak English. She had no idea what I was talking about. It was nowhere to be found. So there was one other place in that town that said it had it so i went to the other place and this guy this guy was spoke english whatever <laughs> um i walk in i said what's up i'm looking for this natter days beer well first i looked and it wasn't there so i came up to him, was like hey it says that you guys have it what's going on he's like well i ordered it but it hasn't come in it comes in tomorrow and but they sent me a few samples and i have one can left what? <laughs> like the Bush Gods. Oh my god. The gosh. Bush Gods are here because I wanted to do this this review yeah. of the of the Natter Days here in the with all the palm trees and stuff because it's got flamingos on it. It looks really summery. It looks like something you would want to drink on vacation. Yeah, I mean it looks so like wanted, it looks like they would sell more than one can in the Coachella Valley by the way the can looks. Right. But so this was the only can in existence in this part of the state. And uh, so the guy was like, he like rifled through a couple beers in his cooler and like <laughs> grabbed it out of the back and pulls it out. He's like, you know, man, I'm only going to charge you like 89 cents or something. <laughs> Gold mine. So I gave, him, I gave him a buck and I have the only Natter Days beer in the Coachella Valley sitting right here. Um, I'm actually, this podcast will come out on Friday. So this is Friday right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually shooting the the Natter Days video earlier in the day on on Friday, so you better not leave that I, uh, out. You got a bunch of golf carts coming by; they're gonna see that 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 can. They're gonna recognize it right away. And uh, yeah. yeah, you better be careful, man. 
Um, so, I mean, I will applaud Natural Light and say that they have done a very good job marketing this thing. Absolutely. But it all starts with a can, right? This this doesn't <clears throat> catch anyone's eye if it doesn't look the way that it looks. It's got the flamingos on it. It's got the red, the yellow, the pink. Like, why why aren't more beers doing stuff like this? That's like the like if Bud Light came out with a ridiculous can, everyone's gonna want to try it. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like Summer Shandy. Uh, it's got the the yellow accents with like uh, you know the yeah. the nice line of Google's logo and and the boat in the water and. It, it's something that that catches your attention, and you gotta. <laughs> see. Whoa. Oh my God, that's cold. The uh, desert just probably dropped a few degrees here <laughs> after I opened that open that bush latte. But yeah, I feel like um, I feel like Natural Light had to they had to make a move of some sort like that. They came out, didn't they? Come out with like the seventy five pack. Yeah, it was like 77 pack, I think. Okay, you got the 77 pack. It's a differentiator. That's asinine. So obviously people are going to recognize it. But yeah. I'm digging the can, man. I, I think they did well on that on that marketing ploy. Right. I, I, I agree. I, I think that they did a good job with the can. Again, I'll hold it up for everyone that's watching. Um, for people who are on the podcast just listening and don't know what we're talking about, here is a audio visual, as we like to do, Let's hear it. of the can. So if we're going to start at the bottom, we'll start at the bottom, Ryan. It's got a yellow background, and now throughout the whole can, there are flamingos. Little uh, flamingos that you would stick in your yard, you know, like a, a decoy yeah. flamingo, basically. All over the can, scattered. Um, there's, a red, there's a red stripe on the bottom that says, For those who like strawberry lemonade and drinking beer... Um, so you know right off the bat this is going to be a beer with a strawberry lemonade twist um, then the next stripe is yellow and it says Natter Days which is a fun play on natural light Saturdays yep. um, I think it's very heavily played to the frat culture <laughs> college culture the I'm just really trying to get drunk culture um <laughs> And then it's got your classic natural light logo, um, but and and as the can goes up, it has a, it goes from yellow to a pink at the top, so it's kind of like a, a fade into pink. Um, I, I do, I I think they did a really good job with the can because um, it's got everyone talking about it. It kind of made me want to check out the can for myself for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited. Uh, the video for. The Natter Days versus Bush Light goes out next week, um, but I'm excited to try it tomorrow slash earlier today when this podcast gets released. Yeah, uh, I, I would ask you how it was, but we're just gonna wait for the review video because it's well, and I can't like open one and try it beforehand because I literally have <laughs> one, one Natter Days beer. <laughs> so this is gonna be an absolute knee jerk reaction through and through. So, yeah, man, it's been a while um, since we've done a comparison too. Uh, the last one was Bush and Coors, I believe, and then the one before yeah. that was kind of what started it all was the Spotted Cow and Bush Light comparison. Well, and, and a little bit, and this is like a this is like a tell all right now, Ryan. But a little bit, the reason why I kind of wanted to take a break from it is there's only so many different ways that you can talk about a light beer, right? You know, other than the their marketing or you know yep it, it and so when the natter days came out like that is a very distinct thing that i'm able to differentiate from like if it was just normal natural light you know yeah all right so miles you've been in the coachella valley in air quotes for the, what, which like, it sucks because this place like where i'm at now is like where all of the old people come and retire. Okay. You know, like they snowbird here and all they do is play golf and do nothing. But yep. when you say Coachella Valley, everyone just thinks of the festival Coachella. So they think <laughs> that I'm like it some sounds millennial dope. like with like paint on my face and I'm wearing like no clothes and I'm just tripping balls <laughs> on on drugs at the Coachella event, but I'm actually just chilling with a bunch of old people and playing golf. But, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. you got this. You got the shades for it, and you got the ear, the the AirPods for it. So you're you're halfway there. 
Um, I think I think the older community needs a little spice like that in in their days. Yeah. Um, but being, you know, getting out of the Midwest for a little bit, being in the warmer weather, um, does it make you appreciate that you're from the Midwest even more now that you get to go to warmer weather while I'm, I'm back here waiting for a foot of snow this weekend? Yeah, it, it definitely makes me appreciate. Well, and we talked about this in the Midwest, like you plan this one warm vacation and like you plan this one and that like keeps you sane the entire winter yeah. right like this spending this like 10 days or wherever that i'm here is like makes all of the foot of snow that i'm gonna come back to like worth it because yeah. it is so nice and all of that um yeah i also understand that there's a lot of people who don't necessarily they either can't afford to go on a, a warm vacation or they just choose not to because they're trying to save money or they just haven't done it. And like, I don't know, they just didn't grow up doing that. Um, if you are out there and you can spare a little extra cash, I definitely highly recommend taking a warm vacation in the winter because it makes it a lot better. Well, yeah, it's kind of like the, uh, the family that we had outlined in our last podcast episode, um, the family yeah. who travels every 10 years and mom is making sure everyone's in order. Do you have your boarding pass? Jerry, we don't yep. have, we don't have the snacks. Um, that's the family that, that like they do that because they're so appreciative of going on vacation and they don't get to do it too often. So mom just wants to make sure like everything is going yep. according to plan. Everything's perfect. By the way, so by the way, I, I saw a bunch of the, the business guys that we talked about on the podcast. Um, I also saw, I saw, uh, the Villanova water polo, team <laughs> women's water polo team um, okay so, so it's not d3 we were, basketball but it's close enough <laughs> yeah it was it was women's water polo um <laughs> i saw them um so again all the stereotypes held up at the airport once again oh we got i gotta tell you my story about getting canceled to denver okay yeah let's hear so it. we were gonna go to denver first and then to the to the valley well I ended up, the weather was really bad in Denver. So then I have to, they reroute us to Chicago. I have to Ugh. stay overnight in Chicago, then go to Denver, then go there. So it ended up, what should have been like six hours of travel should have ended up like 27 hours of travel, which yeah. was an absolute nightmare. Um, but I made it. Um, and you're still at home in the freezing cold, so... Yeah, um, your uh, your your tent must be okay. There, there we go. go. There's, yeah, a, you're, uh, you're, there's an you're, there's an um, <laughs> there's an umbrella here, Ryan, that uh, I put down. Um, you wouldn't know because you're not in the uh, you're not in the warm desert I'm not right in now. So Coachella you Valley. Yeah, you're yeah, rubbing you in my face, man. Yeah, I got to because you look like a buffoon in my robe. By the way, <laughs> the robe looks way better on me because. My chest hair is flowing out of it like I am, like I have going right now. Yeah, I, I got nothing. I, yeah, I you're, literally like, you, you I look think like I, a child. Yeah, but I kind of like it that way, you know. Maybe start growing a few one day. Maybe put a little Brazilian wax on there. Um, keep it clean. Keep, keep it soft. The, um, I shouldn't have got a white robe. Is I shouldn't have done that because you're going to have so many stains on that thing by the time that I come back. Yeah, which I mean, is you disgusting. could just, you can gift it to me. Um, I actually might print, I might print an "Oh my God, that's cold" uh, design on there. I wouldn't hate that if it was able to happen on there. <laughs> yeah, um, um, man, the robe's been really nice. Uh, like I said, I've been in it for like three days now. Um, oh, I've been holding down the fort. It's been pretty fun. I, I, I got all the shirts were knocked out Monday, Tuesday. Shipped them yesterday. Um, all you guys are gonna get your your. St. Paddy's drinking day shirts, uh, just in time for next weekend. Plenty um, of time, right? Plenty of time. Oh yeah. Yeah. They'll be, uh, they'll be in early to mid next week. So let's talk a little bit about our neighbors next door and the Chanette man. I, I don't know what's going on over there. I, so 
I got you're curious because the, you're talking about the neighbors behind you. Yeah, the neighbors in the next yeah, row. Yeah, give, give give the give the listeners an update of what's going on over there and what we think yeah. is happening. Yeah, it's, I don't know what's the, happening, man. I don't know the, if they. Uh, this is the mysterious neighbors segment of the podcast of what we think is going on. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. It, it, oh, man, I was here by myself. I don't know if they knew I was here by myself, but I felt like I was in an episode of The Purge. And like they're just going nuts over there. <laughs> Music is blaring, and I'm like, man, I like I I went and double checked to make sure the doors were locked. Did and you see anyone coming out of there with like masks on, or why did you say the purge? I didn't because when I got done here, um, I dr- I drove around uh, around the building to kind of look in the windows, see if there's see if there's any lights on. Um, they were all like fogged you out. You were creeping. Oh yeah, man! I gotta see what's going on. I was tempted to walk in there, but at the same time, I was by myself, and I wasn't about to take that risk because if I, if I'm gone, who's gonna wear the robe and who's gonna wear the who's gonna print well, the t-shirts? I don't necessarily care if you die, Ryan. I more care if you get blood on my robe. Yeah, that would be an issue because then you'd have to buy yeah. a new hundred fifty dollar robe. Yeah, and that's like that robe is one of a kind, so. Uh, plus, I'm still making payments on it. So, <laughs> if you could just avoid dying in the robe and getting blood all over it, you can die on your own time. Just don't die on my time, please. Yeah, and I'm not going anywhere anytime robe. soon. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going anywhere soon because uh, if I do go over there, it's uh, I'll take the robe off. I have a lot of respect for this thing. Um, did, I just knew that you, someone. Did you say that the windows are fogged up in the garage? Yeah, well, in, in yeah, the neighbor's garage. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I saw that too. What is going on over there? Yeah, so we might need to bring a group of people out, and uh, like, I, I need, I might need some backup, man. I'm gonna have to throw a post out saying, "Hey, I need some backup here." Um. Well, when I get a call that your party got out of hand this weekend, Ryan, I'll tell the cops to also check the place next door to see if they're doing illegal activity. Yeah. Are you having yeah, a party this weekend? Party of two, man. Me and the heat press, uh, trying to warm the place up. Uh, probably play a little Madden. Um, yeah, right. You're gonna have all of swear. your two. You're gonna have all of your two total friends over, and you guys are really gonna rage, aren't you? Yeah, man. The box of t-shirts and the heat press, and then me. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, the sun's no, kind of going though. down here, Ryan. Um. So for me, going on vacation for me, I, I, I do it once a year. We didn't decide to take a vacation this year because um, I'm getting married this year, man. I'm getting married in August. You don't have to um, brag that someone loves you. <laughs> well, yeah, because I know you don't. So getting married in August, we're not taking a vacation this year. But whenever I go somewhere warm in the winter, um, it's usually February because February is always the coldest. Um, I appreciate it that much more just because... You got all these people who want to, you know, after college, you're like, oh, or after high school, ah, I'm going to college somewhere else. I'm going somewhere warm. I'm, I'm moving out of these states. Oh, it's like, yeah. man, but the the nicer states like California, Florida, Arizona, you're, you're there in the warm and you're there all the time. And it's not as much of a novelty um, if you live there versus if you just get to visit there. So um, I'm a huge advocate of the Midwest, man. I, I like it because you get an opportunity to go to those places and see different see different scenes and um, makes you appreciate, you know, the palm trees and the nice golf courses in February that much more. Well, and so I did play some golf, Ryan. Um, and I'll just have to say that I might quit, you betcha, to go on the tour um, after that round of golf. That's how well I did. So, <laughs> Yeah, I think you should just um, hop on a golf court and just, just take off, hop on a cart, and just, just go. Every, uh, every single time that I chipped in for Eagle, which was pretty often during my round, <laughs> um, I had to give – eventually, I don't know where it happened, but – out of nowhere, all of a sudden, we just had a crowd following us on this golf course. Um, and so every time that I chipped in for Eagle, I would just have to tip my hat to the crowd that was that gathered watching me golf. So <sighs> might have to get some golf content going. Um, you know, the uh, – well, okay. So we need to start – that that makes me think this is totally off topic, Ryan, and we didn't talk about this beforehand. But <laughs> – we need to start hyping up April 14th. 
which is Ooh. the premiere of season eight of Game of Thrones, but also the Master Sunday this year. So literally yes. Master Sunday is going to get done on April 14th, and it's going to go right into Game of Thrones season eight, episode one. And wow. I tell you what, I have cleared my schedule for months now. I am not doing anything other than those two things on that day. Um, are you a Game of Thrones guy? I, I think we talked about this on the podcast before, <laughs> but I don't remember. I'm not, man. No, I've never. I, I've seen like the first eight, like probably six to eight episodes, and uh, I, I have a short attention span, so it's tough for me to sit down and try and follow what's all going on. So, but uh, I did see the trailer online. I did not watch it, um, but you're. See, you're hyping it up right now, and I think I might have to sit down and just. Um, well, well I, I don't have time. So I, I have too many T-shirts do, to print, so it's not even realistic. Do you think that you would be able to commit to watching the first seven seasons between now and April fourteenth <laughs> if I give you my if I give you my HBO password? Who's gonna print and the shirts? Each, and each week you watch a certain amount, and then we talk about it on the podcast. That would be the segment until the premiere. And then yeah. once every week we talk about it then. Yeah, I'll just have to submit a, uh, a PTO request to you and uh, see if that goes through or not. Probably not. Oh. But. I Honestly, I might with a PTO request might go through because that's how much I love Game of Thrones and want you to watch it. <sighs> okay. Um yeah, Game of Thrones. I, I think I might just start it over from the beginning. Um, like everyone I talk to rants and raves about it, so it's obviously not going to be a bad uh, a you bad. You literally move. have to push through the first season. Sure. Season two starts to pick up, especially at the very end. Um, I'm actually watching it again right now. Um, I just <laughs> finished season two, so I'm on season three now. Uh, I, I'm very, actually very curious to see how many of our listeners watch game of thrones so if you guys are on facebook if you are on any other social media platform and you're watching this video or listening to this tweet at us send us a dm let us know that you are game of thrones fans because i would love to do some game of thrones content um but i just don't know how many people are actually interested in it versus what the real world is but um, yeah, and see, I'm super interested in the Masters because I, I got into the Masters when I was in college because all my buddies who I lived with are golf guys. So they they would literally coop up in one guy's room. They would sit down, watch the Masters. They'd probably skip class like once or twice that day. Drinking um, beer. And it, drinking beer. And it was, honestly, man, it was like the end of the school year um, because where I went to school, we got out in early May. Um, you got like two weeks left and then a finals week. and. Yep it was super nice because you can just like uh, the masters is just a different atmosphere than any other 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 golf tournament on on tv well golf is slowly starting to do a good job to making it making golf more fun and not as much like gentleman like yeah it's becoming more of a spectator sport kind of like baseball they're trying to speed the game of baseball up a little bit it's tough to do with golf because um Obviously, that you guys, there's really no time limit the, on hit. So I actually think that like Masters and the Ryder Cup has done a lot for golf. Because sure. Yeah. At, at the Ryder Cup, the crowd is like going nuts, and like the players are like pumping up the crowd, and they're talking shit to each other back and forth. <laughs> like one guy sinks a punt, and he like. Get, whoa sinks a putt and then gives him like a like what's up and then the other guy sinks an even further putt and then he's talking shit back to him and that part has made golf i think a lot cooler than what it used to be where it used to just be like this yep gentleman sport yeah man you know what i really enjoyed oh man the phil mickelson tiger woods face off on pay-per-view um I can't remember Bleacher Report. I I think was streaming it for free. Um, <laughs> yeah. There was I like a total glitch or something, right? Yeah, it was I like literally. People, <laughs> everyone was getting it for free, even though it was supposed to pay for it. Yeah, pay per view. I literally had my computer up at work, watching Phil versus Tiger, Lefty versus the Goat, and that's what I watched. And I was so into it that um, it kind of got me even more pumped up for this upcoming golf season (laughs) um 
and the Masters, the Masters tournament. Oh my God, the Masters is cold. <laughs> no, I I love the Masters. Um, I grew up in a household where my father loves golf. Yeah, like we're talking, we sit down on any given day, and he's got the golf channel on, and we're like. You know, we like golf, but I don't know if I want to watch it all day long. <laughs> and that, that's uh, where it starts, I feel like, is, is the old man sitting down watching golf or playing golf. Like, that's that's how it filters down through the generations. Yep. So you, uh, hey, I, now answer this for me. Do you think a lot of, like, 14 to 18-year-old kids are playing golf, golf these days? Um, I think people can, who can afford it. Yeah. I think it's one of those sports that costs a lot of money to do, kind of like hockey. Yeah, I mean, if you're um, looking to spend like 50 bucks, uh, 40, 50 bucks, like you can go shoot around and get a cart. And I, man, I'm not about that walking game. I'm getting a cart every time. Yeah, screw anyone who acts like they like walking on the golf course because we all know you're a liar. And I mean, um, if, it's a par th- if it's a par three, then yeah, I'll walk. <laughs> Uh, but the it's better a better move too is to pack your own bush lattes in mm-hmm. your golf bag. Um, that's a great move. Yeah, I mean they got uh, they got golf bags with with coolers in them now, so it's it's yep. pretty convenient. Yeah, that's that's been clutch the last few days when I've been golfing. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for the Masters. I, I'm excited. We got to come up with a good name for April 14th. It just might be the best spring day I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, it, the um, weather's going to be nice then too. I bet. So, Ryan, as the sun's going down. We'll kind of conclude this podcast coming up here, but we're going to talk about one more thing, I think. Um, and I kind of segued into it is that usually, usually when I take a vacation like this in the first part of March, when I come back, stuff is starting to melt and spring <laughs> starts becoming upon us. It's funny you say that. <laughs> I, yeah, I do not think that that's going to happen this year. No, this um, year it's like versus things, things starting to melt. This year it's things are starting right. to snow and I'm getting my shovel out again to shovel a foot of snow. Yeah. Well, what's crazy to me is how much snow we've gotten this year. It's got to be records, right? It's record snow <laughs> yeah. that we've gotten. Yep. Yep. Hopefully no one floods during this. Um, but I kind of feel like spring is like the lost season. Because hundred percent. No, I do like spring fever. I do like that feeling when stuff is melting, and you're like, I just need like want to go outside and do <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you all of a sudden, you know, May gets there late April. God forbid it's warm enough, and you can throw your stuff in the lake. You can kind of start that life. Um, you know, why? Like, poor spring. Like that sucks for spring. See, is I'm there a, any? You go I, ahead. As a as a baseball guy, I'm a big spring fan just because like season's underway. Uh, right now, I would be down in Tucson, Arizona. The guys are down there right now. They're already like four or five games deep. Um, I loved spring just because it was the end of school. It was baseball season, um, and now obviously I don't have school. I don't have baseball. So right now, I've really only experienced one spring without that. So I took a vacation at the end. Things started to warm up when I got back. Yep. Things started to melt. But now <laughs> this is going to be interesting, man, because, I mean, again, we've said it 10 times, foot of snow this weekend. Um, and it's like, is there is there light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I tell you what, there's light here. Well, it's going down, but there's light here, Ryan. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try and soak, <laughs> I'm gonna soak up every last ray, trying to get Savage tan, soul process. Um yeah. So, is there any activities that are like fun, like specific to the spring? Now, this is not something that I would do. But one of my buddies who loves to like wakeboard and stuff in the summer. He, yeah. He takes a ski rope and he hooks it to a trailer hitch and he goes wakeboarding in the ditches when everything starts <laughs> to melt. That's so awesome. I think, I think ditch surfing is probably an activity, but not for everyone. Right. Is there like something that you do in the like? I would say that the number one like sport in spring in the Midwest is got to be like beer dart season. 
Like, oh my gosh, hundred like, percent ac- across the yeah. It's as soon as it gets warm enough, you're throwing darts out in the yard. Um, other than that, I don't know if I can think of anything other than hitting like the golf range and waiting for that to open up. Yeah, it's weird you say that because uh, beer dart season obviously starts you know right when the snow's melting, but then like walleye see walleye opener. Um, just kind of waiting for all the ice to melt off. Like you still have to wait for that. Um, yep. Yeah, the snow might be gone, but there still might be um, ice chunks out on the lake, so you can't even get the boat out. Um, so fishing, you still got to wait for that. Um, beer darts is really only like the the only thing that you can kind of just push through the snow, push through the ice, <laughs> the, the the soggy ground, and like just have a good time with your buddies. So. Man, off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything. I'm a big fisherman, so I still have to wait a little while, but um, I'm definitely going to be pulling the darts out this spring and, and getting a few games and getting yeah. a few darts in the leg. Oh, weird that the only activity you can do in spring is just drink with your buddies, binge drink with your buddies. <laughs> okay, so all winter, um, yeah, that's what we do here. We drink with our buddies all winter, and then yeah. all spring oh, it's like, yeah, we just, we just drink with drink. our buddies. Oh, so, well, yeah, so what do you guys do in the spring? Oh, we just drink with our buddies. Well, so what do you do in the winter? Oh, we just drink with our buddies. Uh, we, dr- we, dr- drink, <laughs> we drink with each other. In the summer, we drink, we drink, but it's just on water. We do it on water. Yeah. Um, and the fall, we drink, but it's just in parking lots at tailgates so right really i think in the midwest we just kind of honestly we just drink all the time <laughs> we <laughs> just drink, really, man. i don't think this goes but uh that's why winter i that's why winter drags on so long is because there's there's not a lot to do um unless you got snowmobiles unless you're a big you're like by a ski resort or something like that but um, a lot of places from the Midwest aren't that even, hilly. Even if you're doing that stuff, though, it winter in the Midwest just wears on you. You can only do it for so long, man. You can only <laughs> run that sled until it breaks down. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited for spring to come. It's maybe way too early to even be talking about spring, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited. This You Bet Your Radio podcast was brought to you by our friends at the Bev Buckle. Bev Buckle is a belt buckle that is the world's first retractable drink holder. And you can find them at bevbuckle.com. That's B E V B U C K L E.com. And you can get 15% off of your order by using promo code You Betcha with no space. Y O U B E T C H A at bevbuckle.com using promo code You Betcha for 15% off. All right, guys, thanks again for listening in to episode nine of the You Bet Your Radio podcast, the vacation podcast. We're, we're tuning in remote right now. Miles has got his shirt unbuttoned, his sunglasses oh, on. Chest I'm, here, I'm, I'm here in the Midwest waiting for the snow to come. I got the robe on. Um, honestly, man, things are good. But go follow us. Oh, you betcha on social media. That's at O-H-H, you betcha. I'm jealous right now, man. Uh, once the t-shirts were printed on Monday and Tuesday, it's like, you know, what do I do for my week now? Well, I get ready for the podcast on Thursday. And yeah, I get to see Miles just hanging out in the sun and see some golf carts in the back and the chest hair flowing out. And uh, yeah, go follow us. Uh, I, I am at Ryan, the t-shirt guy. I, I'm, I'm saying this right now because like I'm, I'm lonely right now. Um, I need some. I need some. some Ryan social. is lonely. Go follow him on Instagram and Facebook at, at Ryan the T-shirt guy. Ryan the T-shirt guy. Um, yeah, we're starting to push some content on there. It's been fun. Uh, the, the the reaction to the stuff I've been putting out so far has been it's been cool to see. Um, pulling some of the you know the you betcha audience over to Ryan the T-shirt guy. Kind of see how, what I do and and uh, the, the I would say the hats that I wear but it's more like the robes that I wear. Yep. <laughs> um, Ryan, I want you to take that robe off as soon as we're done. I want you to take it to your house. I want you to bleach it. <laughs> I want you to wash it about four times. Um, and then I want you to put it back because if that thing is still dirty when I get back, we might be looking for a new t-shirt guy. Uh, yeah, but- yeah, so when, when you come back, it'll be a uh, tie-dye um, blue and white. <laughs> You'd be dead. I would be so mad. <laughs> you bet I you paid themed so much robe. money for that. Yeah, I know you're still paying for it. <laughs> Whatever, Ryan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miles, the you betcha guy. I got my chest hair flowing. I got palm trees in the back. I got bush lattes flowing. 
Um, this was the vacation podcast. It wasn't the most ideal podcast. It wasn't the best executed by us. <laughs> but even on vacation, the execution never stops. The content never stops. I am Miles, you bet you guy. May your ranch always be runny and your bush lattes forever be cold. Cheers, Ryan. Cheers. <laughs>